Hello, my friend. We are live. Three, two, one. Roll the footage. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this live training. This is super exciting for all of us, for the Strategy Sprints team, for you out there, the CEOs of small and medium companies, of startups, of growth companies, because competition is for losers. We all know it. It's better to not have to think about competition. It's so much better to think about creating value for the people you care about, for the people you serve. But if you are in a position where you have competition, you have the pricing topic, you have the comparison topic and all these struggles. So in the next 60 minutes, we are going to solve one of these struggles after the other. Three actions, very applicable, sprint style. You know us, guys. It's direct to the point. We will not waste your time. So stay tuned. Pick your pen and paper because this is going to massively change the way you run your business. All right. So let's get this started. Antonio Chivita is with us, certified strategy sprint coach, certified blue ocean expert, an absolute expert in the fields of differentiation and how to design a business and how to design products that rock. Simon Severino in the house. I am the founder of Strategy Sprints. My superpower is to bring together the business owner of a growth company with a sprint coach that will be your chair guy, like Spider-Man has it. So you are Spider-Man. You have the sprint coach. You rock. And... Uh, now I hand it over. Take it away, Antonio. Oh, thank you, Simon. Uh, so today we will talk about uh, Blue Ocean strategy, and we just boil it down three things you can just apply today uh, to, to differentiate. But by doing this, we I want to uh, first um, let you understand that we, we, we Usually, when we talk about innovation, it's something that is, a lot of people are afraid, a lot of business are afraid, because they think that they need to change the, the whole company. And they, they maybe they're, not, they're afraid because they don't have the, uh, the possibility or the team or the skill, the feel they don't have. But innovation is not by doing much more and wasting a lot of money in doing things, because innovation by itself is uh, it's a risk of things. But innovation in blue ocean strategy means doing better by doing less. So um, uh, please, Simon, go to the next slide because we have control of, of this deck. Uh, mm -hmm. So what does what this mean doing value innovation instead of doing innovation like we, we everyone knows? Doing uh, value innovation means to solve the current problems and increase the customer value by saving Eliminating and reducing the factor an industry compete on, and buyer buyer will find much better value uh, because the business are able to raise and create elements in the in the industry that they ever offered before. So uh, here are three ways to doing this. Uh, um, we we just boiling down. So if we go to the slide number seven, we we highlight the most three most impactful things you can do right now, and. Uh, uh, there are, they are very simple. One, one is value remapping, Remap, completely remapping the value your company is offering to the world. And uh, the second thing is setting new boundaries, how you can define a new market out of this one where there are the sharks and the, uh, and the, and the bloody red ocean. So we, did the, we were going to redefine the marketplace and find a way where no one is competing. Uh, with us. And the third is uh, uh, the, the, the main core uh, abilities of the strategy sprinter that build and measure faster than ever. So uh, let's, let's move on. How we can re rem re remapping the value. So uh, everyone, um, everyone are investing just to be like everyone else. Sometimes in the companies are evenly investing on coping other companies because someone else is doing so. It means that uh, it, it means that it's successful. So companies go and watch other landing pages and copy it. They're watching uh, start doing a kind of. Um, 
reverse engineering of uh, other uh, competitor process uh, and products. But uh, why be everyone else when everyone else is taken? So uh, this simple exercise of uh, uh, listing on the X line, all the things industry are competing uh, and the setting on the Y axis, uh, how much you want to raise the bar or lower the bar will differentiate your value. So let's take an example, Netflix and cable TV. So uh, let's see the cable TV in red first. So cable TV are easily um, rely on, for example, commercial and news pro and news program and live sport and, and uh, um, tech support and stuff and installation process capability and blah blah blah. So what what does the team of Netflix uh, actually did when it start the when it start the company? Uh, first of all, says okay, we don't need any commercial. So we need we ne we never we never uh, need the cost of doing a, a sales team that sells commercial to the business. We never have news program. We never have live sport. So it start cutting what is not necessary for them to enter in the business faster. So blue ocean strategy is actually a cost opportunity. It's not building something costly and risky. Uh, then it set the price it's very, very low. The mass everyone can adopt, like ten dollars a month, can everyone can afford it. So uh, there's no installation process. There you can just uh, make an account, open the browser, start click a button, and start watching it. And then uh, that, that was very low compared to the to the effort uh, to the investment other company are doing. And then when you start seeing what other companies are under investing on, on the movie series, uh, with actually actually all the movie series on other television actually sucks. So they start investing massively on building uh, a very engaging show, inviting stars, writing their own script, uh, uh, buying exclusive uh, series, and then ability to view full season and binge watching. You can actually, you, you can do binge watching when you're watching uh, cable TV, uh, a lot of them. And uh, the, ability, the ability to watch from anywhere, you can watch, all the family can watch different movies at the same times from the computer, from the phone, from the pad. So they actually create a new value for them. You can have the experience, you, you can have the entertainment experience, but with the added value. So by uh, watching actually what the competition uh, were investing, the Netflix team actually reduce what is not worth investing on and I create a new space. And you can use this graph to go into what is called the four action framework. You basically, you can, you can have four different action to, uh, you can take right now, when you, uh, uh, right after you make this, uh, uh, this graph, to, uh, to improve your business. And the first one is to eliminate. So you compare it from your competitor, you understand what where you cut cost, what is not useful, where people is not getting the value. So actually, you no one's like the commercials. No, no, no one's actually pay attention to the news program anymore because we have Facebook, we have whatever, you are always interrupted. So because that is not uh, valuable anymore to the customers, Netflix decide to eliminate that. You can just understand what to eliminate by looking at this graph. Then you start reducing. Reducing, you see, you it means that uh, companies has uh, f um, companies has some interest in that because co uh, customers find some sort of value, but it's something that not actually want to add. You you keep to the minimum. You keep to the minimum the price. You keep to the minimum the staff support because actually. It works, so so there is no much uh, any um, any other efforts in, into the, the to put into the customer um, uh, the customer uh, service, and uh, you can keep this below the competition because you're building a much more simple product. Then you start entering in the race, understanding what to raise, where where actually make a difference, where you can make a difference from others' competitor, where where these experiences is much better than other competitors, and then you find what to create, what value you need to create, what things you need to build that anyone else are building. So this is a way to build a, a completely new offer into the market that is not comp that that. that are, that the user cannot compare to each other. You can't compare Netflix to the cable TV because actually 
these things doesn't exist in that service. So in, the, in that product. So it's difficult to create a competing offer from, from the incumbent. Incumbent can't actually create. But you can say, okay, that what we don't only have Netflix, we don't only have, we have also Hulu, we have also Disney Plus. Well, that's a good point. And the signals that identify you, that make you understand that you create a blue ocean, it actually that at some point in the business, it became red. So you keep this process iterating again and again and again, matching, matching your value again, the competition and start understanding what, what you can eliminate and what to raise and what new things you can create to offer and differentiate. You keep your company differentiated. So Antonio, do I understand it right? I'm the business owner. I have this equalizer in front of me. It's like when I'm a DJ, I can put them up or down. So they are there. I just watch them. Okay, what is up? What is down? And I decide, okay, what do I do less? Which is really important right now because people don't have so much budget. So where can I reduce my spending? Which That's is okay. fantastic right now, 2020. And then what what is the specific thing where I will double down on because it's either in raise or in create? This is where I am already. So I don't have to do anything new. I am already differentiated. This is where I will double down on. Is that is that how you use it? Yeah, excellently. Excellently. You can just double down on what you are able to do and not what you want to invest on just to copy somebody else. So business have the fear that you know actually they're not providing values because companies are everyone the same. And Blue Ocean is like going to, to swim, you know. When when everyone are in the same space as you, it's comforting. Even if there are other people, even if the water is warm, it doesn't mean that it's the best bath ever in your life. It's it's like when you swim and you find alone in, in the in a very um, isolated space of sea, then it can be scary because you're doing something that nobody else is doing. But that is the best place to go because you don't have competition you know, and nobody can uh, uh, enter your space because that doesn't have the the, the capabilities. And um, this is another. Uh, very cool example. You already be able to to leverage the technical cap capabilities, the marketing capabilities of your team instead of just acquiring and investing uh, on the things you don't know how to do. Because if you never be able to to do the things, it because uh, just not actually uh, at the intersection of your passion or of what the, your uh, uh, value chain uh, where your company is creating value. So you double down on what you're able to do, what you're passionate about, what your team is skilled to, and you, you just raise the bar higher than everyone else. How do we know that we are too comparable? One thing that I always hated was when we were invited to tenders, to pitches, to bids, where four other competitors were invited to. So at that moment, you can, this is a, a race to the bottom, right? And many people still do it. So this is the opposite of what we would say. As, as soon as you're invited with four different people, you, you have done something really wrong. You, you do not have enough differentiation right now because if you are comparable by price, that yeah. means that you are doing the same thing. Uh, exactly. exactly. So, when, the, when the client want to uh, ask you to lower the price, that means that the only lever you can use, okay, I can do the same with lower price. So that means that you are in a in a very uh, red ocean when uh, when the, they doesn't understand what the difference between you and the other, and they know that your offer is actually a, a, a carbon copy of anyone else, and say, okay, someone else is uh, is offering this for less. I want this for you, but for less. So everyone competing to shrinking their margins and working almost for free just to steal customers instead of uh, uh, gain offer new things to people who were maybe at the bottom of uh, at the margin of your customer base and this one example, does. one example that comes to mind i had once a customer they were a a a small architecture agency so they were building buildings for for people and they went through the accelerator and we said you are too comparable right now you are invited to pitches. You have to get out of that water. 
And they said, Simon, but that's how it works in our industry, in architecture. You know, you get invited to bits because at the end we are all creating houses. We are all building houses. And I was like, oh, really? Do you think that designers, photographers, uh, bands are comparable? Because at the end they are just doing one picture or one song. And then they said, yeah, I, I also think so. And then I asked them, oh, really? So when you do your website, would you call Stefan Sagmeister and say, hey, can you do my website? I pitch you against four others and then we'll see who we take. And then and they, they immediately said, we would never do that. And why? Because Stefan Sagmeister is a category of one. Their, their style is absolutely clear. When you call Stefan Sagmeister, you know what you get. And uh, that's their handwriting and there is no comparison. There is no second one. So yeah. why cannot that be for architecture, for photography, for um, media agencies, for consulting, for all the other people who are listening right now and saying, ah, but in my industry, it's really different. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it always happens when they have a very uh, slow change in products. Like, for example, I mean, you can do business much more differently than anyone else. So I can be differentiated. You can you start offering service that uh, it's not service and design and value. You need to understand the value you need to offer to that customers that set apart of your competition. I mean, Stefan Schachmeister offer at the hand is graphic design. But the style, the quality, and the aesthetics is so differentiating. Uh, and maybe the service itself, working with him, it's a completely different experience that is so enjoyable to do it. Stop with him, that it's set apart from, from other graphic designers in the industry. And uh, uh, become a category of one is, uh, is what happens when you, when, you, when you build this uh, uh, this blue ocean. There is others uh, example, like for example, in the wine category. Everyone knows the, uh, the yellow tail category, the yellow tail um, uh, wine, which is one of the most famous and most valuable brands, uh, wine spirit brand in the world. Uh, I think just one one position below Coca Cola in the in the in the field of uh, value brands in the, um, in drink. And uh, there are, but there are many others. One of is just in Italy is the, do you ever know the, the Super Tuscan wine? Super Tuscan wine is a category no one knows before. It's, that category doesn't exist. And it was a category invented by uh, Antinori. Antinori say, how we can market this wine is very similar to anyone else. There are hundreds of people uh, uh, producing wine in Tuscany. And uh, how we can set apart us from the from the market we invent a new category when we can we can be the first and the only it's a super tuscan super super ever just the name just the name it's super super <laughs> and that's a that, that was magic because it was the only super tuscan wine in the world as was from antinori but now as every blue uh, ocean that became red everyone is doing super tuscany because i mean it's a when you are in the market and it's so profitable then everyone start enter, and if you're able to, to to understand how you can create a numerous and different uh, a category of one, you can move, you can move and build a, a marketing a strategy agility beyond that. Do you like this example of Italian wine? Small. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I was thinking of a photographer who had just one spot where she would do a picture of a couple who just had married. So, you know, after you marry, you go to a nice spot in nature and there is this category of picture. In that spot you do, they are still nicely dressed and before they go to their guests, there is this photo moment. So she had one spot at the beach near to one specific stone and, and she knew exactly the spot and she knew exactly when the light is best and when the wind is coming. So she would recommend the best hour, the best moment, the best way, what not to do, what to do. And this is so niche that you would think, but is there enough market there? Yes, for her, there was enough market because she was a category of one. She was so differentiated that everybody was telling 
others about this. So and uh, and you you see, it's easy to for me to tell that case because it's so differentiated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a, 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 what you call in your sprint, you call a talk trigger. It's the things that you say. Okay, if I say that things, it's the first things that came to my mind. Uh, this brings to us to the known um, uh, to this set new boundaries um process to find not talk with your actual customers uh, but uh, start understanding what are at the at just just uh, just that are a little at the fringe of your customer base that uh, sporadically buy your product but never actually thought about it because you never find the the, the right value so we always have things that uh, we will we, we we need to use but we are not satisfied and we uh, immediately want to jump to another competitor if they offer a slightly different off, uh, offer, if they have a slightly different offer. And this is a, a much bigger space to, um, uh, to actually seek for customers because, because they are very uh, able, the, the, the experience is so weak that if you offer a little more value, they jump on your boat. They stay with you for a longer time. Uh, that are that are the first customer you want to uh, you uh, you want to find the first way to enlarge your market, and uh, so you, you you actually expand beyond your actual market size. For example, if you want to stick with the wine, and uh, back to Casale experience and the yellow day, and uh, you know uh, actually uh, unreadable are the labels of the wine because you don't want because there is a. a a nice uh, uh, logo of a, uh, um, the nice logo of a, of a historic family. You don't buy because it's written, made by uh, Sangiovese or Chardonnay or whatever. Uh, it doesn't help you to understand if that wine is good for that for the situation or for that uh, a particular um, use. For example, if you want to use for uh, instead of something else. So, what were the blue? The blue ocean moves that Casella da did. Casella just uh, cut all, all the uh, chitty chat things on the on the label and say this is white wine and uh, it's uh, it tastes is like peach and like the 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 the, the wine the, the red wine is red wine is not just any Shiraz or whatever just actually a little Shiraz words on the label and uh, wrote on his website and his label. This uh, uh, tastes like raspberry. So it's super simple to buy. You go to the supermarket and you see beyond this um, all white and old style label, you find this fantastic yellow tail label. With, with, uh, uh, you will immediately find it on the, on the shelves and it's just written so simple that you, you don't think anyone else. So this taking... You're taking the market from someone who want to drink cocktail instead, someone who want to drink a beer instead. It's so simple to drink that it's tapped in that market and is stealing market is stealing market share from the beer lovers, from the cocktail uh, makers, uh, from the surfy guys who go who surf the oceans and uh, can also drink wine because they also put uh, wine in cans, for example, just to compete with another category. And uh, Casella Wines doing these strategy moves just became a blue ocean because he's just looking for a customer who's, who just know how, what the wine is, but they never thought to buy wine so much in their life. So wine became, a, again, a very uh, common thing to, do, to drink. And uh, so uh, set the boundary means just like that. Go in place when the customers just sporadically buy your stuff and uh, they uh, they're able to to jump to, on your on your side just because you're offering a little more uh, or a better uh, value at a different you for the competition uh, then there are also other this is actually a great exercise to do as a CEO to do it once a week to think of what is near to my market but it's not my market. And the question that I ask myself, so once a week, uh, I, I am a CEO of a small company. And so once once a week, when I go running, I have just this one question that's usually I run with a podcast or audiobook. But once a week, I, walk, I, I run with only one question in my mind. And it is, which company would I buy 
and why. And, and I'm not thinking of specific companies. I'm thinking of what would they need to have as a criteria for me to buy them. So I'm thinking of demographics. I'm thinking of the value that they create. And what I want to come up, so I do as many ideas as possible. I let them pop up. And then what I want to focus on is, oh, this company is not in my market, but has the same target audience and they have a value which is complementary. Mm -hmm. So I would buy this company if I was a private equity company. I would buy this company, put it beside of mine, and then I would have a broader value for my existing clients. So this is one exercise that I do. And what I come up usually is then I, I don't buy so many companies. So usually I don't come up with a plan of buying a company, but I come up a, a, with a plan of starting a joint venture. So, for example, I am in consulting. I am working with small and medium companies trying to double their revenue in 90 days. Who else could be a partner for that? And that's how we come up with our joint venture partners. And they they are big software firms and they are uh, law firms who do merger and acquisition. And that's how we come up with our joint venture. I guess it's a similar process here. And this is how you can specifically do it during the week. Because uh, am I right that this is not something that you do once and then you have it and then it's gone forever? But this is something that you think about and try to improve. So you try to get different, but also you try to stay different, right, on an ongoing basis. All right. I don't want to add a uh, lot more, but this is just what is the job to be done theory taught, teach to you, that you can go, you can move to adjacent job and say, okay, if I'm doing barbecues, for example, what I can offer to keep and increase my customer lifetime value? I can offer fork. I can offer a uh, plate. I can offer way uh, instruments to light the fire faster. So all the things that the person who loves barbecues love to do, and instead of searching this thing into different competitors, you actually find the same things. Actually, if I the, how to do this bet the, this job better by looking into your catalog, looking into your offer, and you're offering, and maybe you're offering that uh, at uh, at lower price that everyone can adopt. So there's no question asked. You want that things because it's bundled in the offer, and that's what makes you different. Cool. Nice. And this is yours. It's the best recipe. Now we have a plan. So we did this differentiation. We have a plan. We have deducted out of the current situation where we are weak, and we will stop doing that. We have deducted from the current situation where we are strong. We will double down on it. So our budget needs now to be changed. Our activities need to be aligned. How do we execute on that? Let's make it real. Because one part is designing a strategy, but really no strategy ever has created value for any person in the world. The execution is what creates value. So now that you have this plan, you know where you're weak, you will reduce it. You know where we're strong, you will double down. So how we change the budget? How do we measure it? How do we align the team? How do we get it done in the next 90 days, 30 days, seven days, and today? Let's break it down. What we use to break it down and make and, and make things real is the so-called focus card. This is inspired by the lean world where you have a simple way of coming up with a one-page strategic plan. So basically, how do you break it down? Now you have your plan. How do you how does it fit to your vision? When we say vision, we we like to think in three years. So three years, where are you in three years? Write it down in the vision part. And then say, okay, how do we break it down in this year? How much resources will we allocate to which initiatives this year? So 12 months, how do you break that down? You have a new budget now. You will spend less in 30% of it. You will reinvest that 30% into three to five main activities. 
put them in the one year category. And now these dots, these dots are a wonderful double check, reality check. If your initiatives really contribute to the vision and you know, you do the vision exercise on one day, but you do the strategic planning, the monthly planning on another day. Sometimes you lose the connection. So this is really important. And we watch this every seven days. We go over that. It's just five minutes. But every 90 days, we take two hours to really fill it out. And every 30 days, we, we have a review of half an hour and we just tweak a little bit. But it's really important to have everything on one page. So how do they, how do these activities build on each other? How will you get it done? Then you break it to the quarter. The quarter is what we really love because 90 days, that's 12 weeks. That is something wonderful to plan. If you are planning anything like running a marathon, uh, 90 days, it's a wonderful cycle to create a training cycle. 90 days is a wonderful cycle to, to lose a couple pounds, to, to, lose, to lose a couple kilograms. So this is something that is easy for your team to feel, to plan, and to execute on. So think about the quarter. What will you improve in the quarter? And then ask yourself, how will we measure the progress? How will we see, feel, and touch every seven days that we are moving towards the right thing and that the speed is right, that the speed is one that we like? So th that's the KPIs. And this will be done in the light blue sections. We say, OK, how will we measure it? And it can be lifetime value, cost of acquisition, speed of execution, whatever you measure, try to measure it really well. We, we have a ton of resources on the right KPIs if you need help there. But find the main five to nine KPIs that really help you and measure them every seven days. Of course, the KPIs can be related to your main value chain. So how many people are interested, are engaged, they want to work with you, how many of them talk to you, how many of them do you convert into revenue, how how happy are they, that's the NPS score, the Net Promoter score, and how many of them buy a second time from you. If I just could pick a couple, I would pick this conversion rates, these KPIs. But of course, you can have more than that. You can have your sales estimation number, how much will revenue will we have next month and in two months. So whatever your KPIs are, put them there. And then the yellow one is who is doing what? because this is key for execution. Excellent execution means that every day, everybody in the team knows who is doing what. Mm. You know, in Scrum, th th there is a wonderful um, exercise. It's a 10 minutes daily stand-up meeting. Stand up because you don't want everybody to sit down and relax. It's just a quick, okay, who is doing what? And everybody says, I'm doing this. This is what I'm moving forward. And uh, if there are some questions there, they can ask them there quickly, but they will be solved bilaterally after it. It's just knowing, okay, I'm on track, you are on track, we all are on track. Everybody knows what to do. And uh, if you do this right, your meetings can be just 10 minutes. Of course, if you don't do this right, your, your meetings will be three hours, four hours, because you have to clarify all these things. So a meeting is only as good as, as much as you have clarified what you do, who's doing what, and what are the boundaries between the responsibilities. So how you divide the work. That's why the yellow section is really important. Who's doing what? How do we divide the work? And now this is really something that can set the foundation for a sprint team. Because now take care of not micromanaging, of not asking them about every single task, but design the business outcomes. Don't design the tasks for your people. Design the business outcomes. So you are responsible for marketing. You are responsible for sales. You are responsible for operations. All right. What's your plan for marketing the next 30 days? And then let them tell you what the outcome is that they try to reach what the KPIs are that they will measure and ask them if they are on track or not. Don't micromanage too much. Let them design the rest. So the first part, dark blue, is done by the executive team. That's a given. That's top down. But the, the blue and the yellow, let the teams do the rest. Give them as much autonomy as possible. Make it a team of teams, your company. Because now they can adapt, they can navigate, and they can feel their progress. They can own the progress. So they will uh, be motivated to improve the progress 
every week. And that's what you want to have. You want to have a cadence of every week. They feel what they're doing. It's like Angry Birds. You shoot this bird and then you, it says 500 points. You shoot the bird again, it says 600 points. Oh yeah, we have 100 more. And you want to feel it right now. So if you are getting these numbers from, I don't know, from your accounting team or from your controlling team or marketing team or whatever, and you are getting these months three months late, this is not how you steer a team. So many, many companies out there, they wait four months for this information. If your team does activities and has to wait four months for information, then you are setting them up for failure, for demotivation, for burnout. Imagine that you are playing Angry Birds, you shoot the bird, and then you have to wait for three days to get the information if it's 500 points or 600 points. You wouldn't play that thing, right? Because it's not flow. And now we, we were just in another call, Antonio and me, where we, 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 we saw some numbers that people expect flow. When you, when you go out there and click send me this book, uh, you expect it to come to be shipped the same day. When you, when you look at something on your phone, you expect it to work in two seconds, not 17. This is, how, this is the, world, the world we are living in. This is what your users are more and more expecting. They are impatient, they are demanding, and this is exactly how we feel when we are in a team, we also want it to be in a flow state. We want to feel what we're doing, to have the, the possibility to feel our progress, to see our progress, and to, to own our progress, to be part of the progress, not just part of the work. So this is the focus card. You can go on our website and, and download it. Uh, our website is strategiesprints.com slash tools. You find all these tools and you can download them and use them with your team. The next thing is how you structure the flow of your meetings over the whole year. Because sometimes we have we have CEOs we talk to and say, okay, what about this number? Well, I don't know because I have to wait for that meeting to produce that number, but my meeting is one month before. So that's of course a dysfunctional flow of the meetings. Think of your communication structure, make it simpler, but more real time. So what do you need to discuss when? We like to have a daily huddle, that's the, this 10 minute alignment. But in order to have that clarity to be done in 10 minutes, of course, we need a fully team weekly meeting where we discuss these bigger blocks. We measure and we improve every seven days. In order to know that, we need to have some client success meetings where we know, and in our case, it's every Monday, all coaches, all sprint coaches come together and we discuss the progress of every single client. And then that information go, goes to the sales meeting where we say, hey, people, you sold to the wrong people. Stop selling to this kind of people because they are not having the best progress in our, in our accelerator. So please only pick the right people. And this negotiation is really important between these two communication formats. The next is the marketing thing. Sales team cannot do anything if they don't get the right leads, if they don't get enough leads, and if they don't, they don't get them quite ready, at 80% ready. So the job of marketing is to capture the attention, to turn that into engagement, and then to hand it over to the sales team. So again, you need to think of when is your marketing team meeting? When is your sales team meeting? And how will, will that communication happen between them? They need to negotiate. Sales team will say, hey, you are not sending enough leads. Marketing will say, hey, you are not closing enough. And these are important discussions to have. Don't let your teams hide in silos. It's bad enough when big corporations do it, but if you're a small company, there is no excuse. Make it simple. And and the, the point is to bring these things together. How, how do they build on each other? And that's the focus card. If you do the focus card right, it's 30 minutes per month, but then you have a flow of communication and a flow of meetings and the flow of decisions, which is really a big difference. So when is your financial meeting? When is your weekly strategy meeting? Etc. Uh, if you need help on that, just drop us a line on strategiesprints.com. We are happy to give you templates also 
on that or to create more training videos like this. Now let's sum it up because Antonio yeah. dropped a ton of value there. So the three things that you need to do is... Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, sorry. So uh, value remapping is the most critical things. You, know, you, you revalue the map, you understand where to cut and you know where to, what to build in order to put yourself aside of the competition and make yourself not comparable with anyone else in the market. So that's the, the, the part where we say, be different. Then you set new boundaries. You say you find a new space where you can offer this new offer. And you instead of start fighting for customer with the, um, um, with your competitor, you will see your customer that will naturally come to you because uh, they 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 never found anything uh, anything similar to your product. And the value you're providing to them it's so much higher than anyone else that uh, there's no brainer. And then you have to stay different. The only way to stay different is to execute faster than anyone else. This can be scary for some companies because they need to change the way they work. But my suggestion is to not change the whole company to be the new the the um, to be the new blue ocean. Just take a product and manipulate them on the at the fringe of the organization and uh, make them successful give them resources there's no strategy if you don't allocate resources to project and you can say we're going to go to the moon but if you don't allocate a uh, budget and people to go to the moon you will never be the the new spacex company so uh give them resources they get oxygen they get more space to fail and build and measure faster than anyone else in uh, in, in your same company and uh, this will also create uh, a sense of emulation and uh, progress. And uh, the, it's the confirmation that you can work differently. And uh, as, you, as, this key, as these things is get building on themselves, you will see that uh, the whole company, the whole company um, will grow. Will grow because people start um, working better. People start uh, stealing methodologies, and if their friends are working better, me too, I work better. So, going by these, these three steps, I mean, the the blue ocean strategy is uh, more than this, but sometimes it could be overwhelming because you have to go through all these steps. You have to pay a lot of consultant to go through each step, and it all boils down to building a culture of growth. But this is the faster way. If you only these things, is your first step to understand the methodology and move and move faster into the next blue ocean moves for your company. All right. So now you can go out there and do this everything by yourself. But remember, if you, if, I just watched the the Spider Man movie, the newest, with my kids, and it is hilarious because Spider Man is young, and he he goes out there and he needs to take so many decisions. Basically, right now, right now, he doesn't have the time to wake three weeks for a committee to come together because right now he has to think, OK, do I kick the left door or do I kick the right door? And now waiting for committees would not be a help. So he has his friend who is on the computer, the chair guy, and he says, hey, should I kick the left door? Should I kick the right door? Chair guy goes on his computer. He says, take the left one because the right one has a cactus there. So he goes for the left one. This is what most CEOs need. It is a 24 seven approach, a real time coach. So this is what our sprint coaches do. We have 34 sprint coaches and they do nothing else than helping CEOs take the right decision for their growth in exact that moment when they need that. And this is what we call the strategy sprint it's a 90 day format again why 90 days you remember why because this is a wonderful 12 weeks is what you can plan very specifically and everybody knows what the goal is so in month one we help you optimizing your offering and your positioning getting out from competition into a field where you are the only one you are not comparable in month two we optimize your sales and conversion rates with you so that your also your flow of meeting gets better and in month three you are ready to scale. You are in beast mode. There is no, no comparison to where you were in month one. In month three, you have an industrialized sales process and an automated way of acquiring and converting customers. So if you want to find out if this is right for you, 
you can go to our website. It is strategiesprints.com slash apply. And while most of our clients in 90 days, they could double their revenue, find out what your specific ROI is right now on this. So you click there, you will answer a couple questions, and then one of us will walk you through the 90 days and see what your specific K, uh, ROI, KPIs also, yeah, but your specific ROI is. So if you invest time and money to do it, what can you have in terms of growth? So this is one thing that you can do. Or if you want to do it even quicker, go to strategy sprints.com slash sales you will find a 15 minute exercise this 15 minutes exercise will walk you through what antonio just did where are your weaknesses where are your strengths and after that you know what to reduce you know what to double down on just go out there do it keep rolling if you have any questions ask antonio ask me and thank you very much everybody keep rolling